love kimchi. I love love kimchi. Yes, I do. I love kimchi. I love love kimchi. Come on. I love kimchi. I love. You ready for it? I love kimchi. I love. Oh. All right. You I, did it. I did it. Look, I could do it. You did. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. Hello, everybody. What's How up? are you? What is up? What time is it? It is 8.31. Now. Why are we late? We're not late. We're 8.30. We're late. And oh, I'm going to tell, tell you why we're late. Uh-oh. Angela was late. <laughs> and that's fine. But Teamwork. Teamwork. Take one for the team. Angela works from home. I don't know how she's late. What? We're at home. Okay. There's no commute. Oh, no. This is going really great. Uh Uh-huh. What else am I doing wrong? (laughs) I am on time. Uh Uh-huh. And I'm part of the setup crew. There's a crew of one. It's me. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. And I also went to work, which I drove to, and I drove back. I am not late. Juan wrote, y'all one minute late, almost left. Mm, See? They noticed. But we weren't late. 8.30, Uh, 8.30, we hit it. No, you know what happened? It was like a screen, and then it's just a white dot. And I was like, I don't think we're live. Yeah, and so we, we actually did it over. Yeah, we went live, but it didn't go So live. it was technical difficulties. That is kind of not on me. Mm, but. Oh, how but the tables have turned. The reason we are also late is because your commute from the bedroom over here <laughs> to, this, this, to this bedroom. And I made a coffee. I am very productive okay. today. What I'm, are I'm you just saying? Just what saying. are you watching, sir? What are you watching this uh, week? I'm watching a couple things I'm watching. Uh, see if this reminds me. Here. So many that Master I... Chef is back. Uh huh. The Chef of Masters. Uh, I think it's the uh, Legends edition. Mm-hmm. So that's what I'm watching. Only the first episode so far, but got some real talent out there. Emerald Lagazi is on there. I hope I'm pronouncing his last name correct. Bam. Bam, Mr. Bam. Uh, yeah, Bam. That guy. Bam, he Bam. he seems so chills on that show, doesn't he? Like he can uh, just he be never, like. He was never uh, a hyper guy. Big hyper guy. I think that's why Bam was such a good thing for him. A balance for him. Yeah, he's balance just like, him. okay, now you're gonna cut the souvlaki and bam. <laughs> souvlaki is Italian. Uh, well, All right, we're going to move on. He didn't only cook <laughs> Italian food. So anyway, souvlaki is a Greek dish if you've never had it before. It's very nice. What else are you watching? Uh, Lego Masters is back. Yes. Oh, so the Master good. of Legos. There's a lot of masters here, apparently. <laughs> legends just, and masters. A lot of <laughs> legends and masters. Just noticed that. Uh, so yeah, that's back for season two. Uh-huh. And uh, uh, season one got you started, right? Got season you, uh, one... Um, did you grow up with Legos? Uh, I had them, but it was never like, I need that new Lego yeah, thing. Yeah, it was never a thing for me. And then when we got into the quarantine, I was like, I need to keep my sanity somehow. And I started buying Lego sets. And I've been, it's a pretty bad, it's a pretty bad, ho- expensive hobby. So oh. yes, now I'm into Legos. I love it. It's coming. It's like puzzles. But you, everything clips in, and then it makes this figurine a, that is pretty stable, unless you drop it or something. It's obviously, a shape. but it's yeah, an it's, it's nice. I started with the architecture line. That's how they get you hooked. You're like, oh my gosh, I look so well traveled with all these little Paris right. skylines <laughs> made right. out of Lego. I don't know, but I thought it was cool, so I started doing that. But ask me what I'm watching. What are you watching? First, I want to say Legos are super expensive for some reason. Super ridiculous. expensive. Kind of ridiculous. Because the, anyway. they have a monopoly on it. And it, it, it the markup on that is, mm. is crazy. Only they can make the Lego brick, apparently. But fun fact, they almost went bankrupt. Mm. And they have revived. So that's pretty impressive. Nice. So what are you watching? Carry on. What are you watching? A few things. So yeah. on Korea On Demand. No. On demand, Korea.com. Right. There is a show called Steel Troopers. And Steel Troopers. Steel Troops. Steel Troopers? Steel Troops. Steel Troops. Yeah. And it mm-hmm. is groups of four from each division of the service. So you have your Navy SEALs. You have your, you know, terror specialists. You have your Marines. You have your Army, military. Right. And they go against each other as teams. 
And Dude, now it's battle. almost, yes, it's almost coming to an end mm. where one team will be the winner of the whole challenge. But I'm like, nice. man, that's crazy. But you see these guys, the bigger they are, no neck, no neck and big arms. And so then you would think, oh, they're going to win all the challenges. No, they are. There are challenges where they have to lift heavy things. Yes, that's easy for them because they can lift. Sure. But there are a lot of challenges where you have to be swift. So you have to be it, being sl uh, like s slim works in your favor because you're like walking through mud and um, there's like you have to go under these steel. Um, what are those things called? You know, those fence um, loops on top of usually on top of fences, like um, in prisons and stuff. So you can't climb over barbed wire, barbed wire. Yeah. They okay. have barbed wire. They have to walk under. But it, this dude, he was so big, it ripped his shirt. It got caught on his shirt. Nice. It's so pretty smart good. You're watching. Um, you know, they shirt. do take off their shirt a lot. So Anyways. not, I'm not, I'm not mad at, wait, wait, ask me, ask me, ask me what I'm excited about. Any female soldiers. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> uh, what are you excited right, about? Shut up. Version is it all male? Do. I know Korea all male. has both. No, it's not all male. So but it's male and female. Yeah, 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 yeah. But then you Who's have who's winning right now? Uh, it's still up to four teams. So it's oh. out of six. Oh, so they're okay. there. So who's out of it? Ah, uh, they came back. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. So you're not watching them? No, no, I am watching. <laughs> it. I'm you not just gonna. Don't no, remember. because it's they fine. Have, it's cool. Next week, I want to know who's out. And I want to know who's in the running. Oh, I'm. I'm oh, we're getting some hearts. That's what's okay. up. <laughs> I think I know who it is. No doubt. Uh, yeah. Okay. okay so you're so, watching Still Troops. Yes. That's all in Korean. They don't have subtitles for some reason. But what I'm really excited about is tomorrow on Netflix. Mañana. Lupin is coming back for season two. L-U-P-I-N is coming back. Lupin? Oh, Lupin. 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 What's Lupin? It's with French actors. But it's okay. subtitled audio in English. The first season was so, so cool. It's about an underprivileged boy who grows up super smart, super sharp. And he ends up, you know, um, getting away with a heist. And But then it it ended on a cliffhanger. Oh, I remember the thumbnail. Oh, it's He's so... He's like in an art gallery or something. Yeah, oh, you've said too much. Oh, it's the picture. You said too much. It's the picture. I'm only describing. Yeah, see, I've Juan knows. That. Love that show, he says. Yes. Lupin. Juan is watching Lupin. Love it. It's coming back tomorrow. So tomorrow is going to be season two. I can't wait. Very Hold on. Nice. I got to say who it's starting. It's starting. Starring. Oh. Starring. Starring. It's not It's not it's a not, football team. It's not starting. It's not starting. Well, oh, I mean, sorry. unless they're playing. English is my second language. I've told you this before. Well, that's why I'm here to correct you. Thank you. I You're appreciate welcome. that. Thank you. I'm here all week, by the way. Oh, wait, wait. It's starring mm -hmm. Omar Sy and Ludivine Sagnier. Oh, French names, obviously. But Omar Sy, you might know him because he was part of um, the Untouchables. Ludivine. 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 Omar, the actor Omar Sy, was in The Intouchables, which Kevin Hart and Brian Cranston remade to The Upside. The Untouchables? No, Intouchables. It's a French movie. Oh, it's one. called okay. The Intouchable. But no, mm. Kevin Hart remade it with Brian Cranston. Really? Yeah. Watched it. The up uh, Upside. The Upside. Oh, yeah. Really so the French like... version was The Intouchables. Huh. Yeah, that was a sad movie. I think. So I don't want to watch it now. Mm, I think you have to make movie. life. Yeah, I get you that. know work for you. Sure. Yeah. But it was still wasn't like a happy. Let's laugh. Whatever happy touching moments in it. Sure. I read Judge Judy's autobiography when I was young, and there was a part of her autobiography which stuck with me. And she said, "Yeah, I get sad. I have pity parties, but after about ten fifteen minutes of feeling bad for myself, I get back up." So even Judge Judy, yeah, I mean, she doesn't have time for it. You know that gift. Yeah, <laughs> she doesn't have time because she's busy counting all her money. Very oh. rich lady. Very rich lady. She is leaving CBS. You think she would be happier with all that money? She's she's so angry at the people fighting over a thousand dollar rent payment because she has so much so much money. Maybe. What do you mean? She has. I don't know. Maybe I'm just making fun of Judge Judy. 
Maybe, but you shouldn't. No, Judge Judy would kick your Judge ass. Judy. I love Judge Judy. I'm I glad love I'm Judge not Judy. in her court or ever in her court. Another thing that Thanks. she said in her autobiography was, if you want to become something or do something, you're not going to be able to do it by staying at home and watching my show. Mm. <laughs> like you're not. If you want to be a lawyer, <laughs> you're not going to become a lawyer by just watching my show or s- staying home just watching TV. You have to get out there and do it. I was like, yeah, thanks, Judge Judy. It's my day off <laughs> reading this interview. <laughs> anyway, she so that's what you're awesome. watching. I love Judge Judy. She's cool. Can I tell you another thing about Judge Judy? My dad used to love Judge Judy. Every, uh, every day at 5 o'clock after work, he was like, or well, 5.30, whatever. Uh-huh. He's like, yeah, where's my judge? Put, this, on my, put on my Judy. This is how bad, <laughs> of, bad of an ass, badass Judge Judy is. Okay. Whenever her contract was up for negotiation, mm-hmm. she would go out for dinner with the head of the network. Right. And she would not let him discuss business. And all she did was slide an envelope with her conditions in the envelope. Right. right. And that was the end of the, the, the business negotiation. This is what I want. So then the next time they had dinner, the head of the network prepared his own letter and envelope slid it towards her she mm. slid it back and said oh no this is not a negotiation mm. she was like i can take my show and do it on any network she's nice. leaving cbs by the way is i believe she? it's cbs yes and she's going to another to another what? network she going to hulu or something <gasps> yahoo <gasps> she yahoo would video. do really well and hulu, hulu would hulu do do uh hulu, netflix she... they would all do really well with her being on the show or maybe amazon scoops her up amazon prime they got money to play with i still wonder how they got Coming to America, they must have. I mean, they beat out Netflix and Hulu. Coming Ooh. to America, too. We never discussed it. Yes. Uh, I think it's actually a, a good, it's a good movie. Uh-huh. But it's very hard to top the first one. Everything is hard, hard to top the first one. Yeah, but I felt like certain elements that made the first one special. Mm-hmm. They couldn't do it in the second one because he's already rich. and I don't mm-hmm. know. I don't know. You think? You think he was too careful? I don't think so. No, no, no. Rich is his character. He's already been a king for ah, so long. No, he's already a king. He's not. There, there's no McDonald's scene for his son. If you haven't seen it, the son is what he finds. Got it's who he finds. Got you. There's that no makes sense. element of that. You want to grow like, up with them? I got you. I don't know. I'm just but saying. But all the faces that came out in that movie. That's oh, what so saved welcoming. It. That's what, that's what Salt and pepper. Woo. Yeah, it definitely had a nice uh, element of Everybody that was supposed to be there was there. I think the only dude that didn't come back is Lisa's mm-hmm. ex. The dude with the soul glow hair. Oh. Okay. It is yeah. what it is. Anyway, I thought, I thought they could have Star gave studded cast. Very nice. Say that five times fast. It's very nice. Star studded cast. You know what else is nice? Uh, I don't know. Our guest today. Nice. A little sweet segue. Segue. Yeah, yeah. That was so money. we have Betty Money. Film photographer. Mm-hmm. Jordana. Dale coming to the show. Let's Jordana, bring her in. Jordana, bring her in. Let's bring her in. She'll be coming. Yay! Yeah. Woo! Hi, Jordana. How are you? Great. How are y'all? Welcome great. to the show. Great. Are you do- Are you great? I'm great. Thanks cool. for asking. We're great. <laughs> What's up? How you doing? Yeah. How are you? You look fantastic. Can you please introduce yourself you? for anyone to- that will be watching this? Everyone and anyone. Yeah. Uh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> now I can't talk all of a sudden. Um, <laughs> Here's a cup of water. If it was in person. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Um, thanks. Yeah, uh, I'm Jordana Dale. I'm a photographer in Atlanta. I shoot completely on film. Um, yeah, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's me. Awesome. Nice. So awesome, you're strictly awesome. film? Yeah. Ah, there's a certain element there that I like. Uh, I'm, I'm all digital now, but <laughs> film is another, it's my next step. Jordana, can I tell you? Hmm. When I first told Mike I'm booking you, uh, and then I'll back up and say why, why I was so interested in Jordana, right? Jordana? Jordana, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm from New York. I'm like, Jordana. You know, <laughs> like, everything is a hard A. Yeah. Jordana, I, when I told Mike, I was like, we have to have her on this show. 
he was like are you are you looking at other photographers because he's a photographer too he's like yo i'm really jealous so i'm very i was joking oh i don't know <laughs> i don't well, know we can have uh we can have a shoot off <laughs> <laughs> this picture is cooler but, Wait, nah, I'm, I'm sorry what did you say jordana huh? i said it has to be on film though Ooh, ah, so you, you already got crazy. me beat I, I don't have i have nothing i have to buy a disposable camera <laughs> <laughs> I made it. Here's my Kodak. Too funny. But here's the thing. You had done a photo shoot and shot these pictures of Carmen C. Williams. Mm -hmm. Was that on top of a mountain? Yeah, that was um, Arabia Mountain, um, which is not too far from, from where I'm at in Atlanta. So. Uh -huh. yeah. so then I was like, oh, let me see who, you know, I was like, oh, Carmen, is it okay if I use this picture? She's like, yes, but please credit the photographer. I was like, oh, of course. And I was like, Hold on, who's the photographer? Because it was, it's such an amazing picture. So then I went into your Instagram profile and I was like, oh, she's an artist. Like everything was, I was just like scrolling through. Speaking of Carmen, here she is. And hey, I was, what up, Carmen? I hey. was scrolling through and I was like, this is fantastic. It was, it's just really, your work is really, really nice. And I was like, ooh. I wanna, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna, I'll take it all off I, whoa. for her. Okay. I would do it. <laughs> That's weird. So, what got you into photography and film? Film um, photography. Mm -hmm. Film photography specifically is um, just because I'm kind of old. I don't know. I um, when I, I swear, if you're younger than us, yeah, I, we're, we're I wanna, <laughs> not be that. You can um, lost your chair, honey. I. Oh. Start, when I started photography, though, I was, um, like, 12, and so I, film was actually, like, the thing, you know, digital was not really, um, it just didn't have the same kind of quality at the time, and so I started on film, and, um, I mean, I was, I was a kid, but I took it pretty seriously. I um, would practice with my friends, you know, we would dress up and take pictures of each other, and my sisters where um, my mom, one of my sisters just joined. Hey, uh, hey sister. hi, sister. Hi, sister. <laughs> and um, yeah, so they would be my models. And um, so I, and then I took a like correspondence course when I was 15 and did, and they, I, they would send me booklets and I would do the assignments and I would send them four by six prints I got from Walgreens or whatever. <laughs> um, nice like from my film and send it back to them. And then they would send me back a cassette tape of a critique of my images. Oh, wow. Uh, like a recording of it so you could play it over and over. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Oh, yeah. Wow. Hopefully it was good um, stuff. Yeah, it was crazy. I, I need to find those tapes. I don't have a cassette tape player, but anyway. Right. Um, but yeah, so that's, I mean, that's kind of how I got, got into it. And I, so I started with film just kind of what I knew. I went to digital, then I went back. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, my sister's saying she loved, loved the. Uh, they would all listen, and I would be so embarrassed. <laughs> critiques oh, love them, nice. is what she said. So you're telling me they were visually looking, but then someone had loaded a cassette tape, and then we're like, okay, for picture number three, we want to make sure that the shading is not too hard. What? Can yeah. you imagine? <laughs> So many... It's is... almost like a live review. Yeah, you're recording exactly what you're thinking as you want, uh, as you look at it. That's pretty cool. Huh. He was like a teacher. He was like a professor, um, and he it was the same guy every time, Mr. Brian. <laughs> nice. I, yeah, he would just um, just yeah talk to me about the images, what was working, what wasn't, um, and and yeah, I would. It was so funny. I would always write him this like letter about like all the things I think I thought were terrible about them. <laughs> like mm -hmm. I did this and this was bad and I, <laughs> I was just like so sh shy and he would always be like Jordana stop <laughs> like you're better than you think you are like nice it was fun. <laughs> yeah it's fantastic like when I was when I go through your pictures it, so this is what is so surprising to me Every single picture that you post is a different vibe, a different mood. It's a different setting, different colors. But when you see it, even, even if they are all different, when they're all together on your page, 
it still looks to like it all belongs together and it's just mesmerizing I know it sounds corny when I say that like use that word but it is and I just couldn't help I literally went through your entire Instagram profile and I was like oh we have to have her on this show it's so nice yeah. so my question is when you do these photo shoots how do you come up with all these different concepts or do the people who are doing the session because I'm thinking if someone comes in and they're just like oh, I want to look sexy or I'm doing it for this there's still so much more that goes into it makeup you know location yeah. wardrobe everything so how do you guys come up with that yeah I mean it varies based on the shoot um sometimes I'll come up with like a, a concept I don't really know exactly where these ideas always come from but it's just you know a mix yeah inspiration I'm seeing and and ideas I have in my head um but I'll come up sometimes I'll come up with a concept and I'll like find someone that I think fits the vision but oftentimes it is like collaboration so the um the client the model like whoever I'm shooting will yeah kind of be like yeah if I, I kind of want a sexy vibe or I kind of want you know I'm thinking like the more like free-spirited or they're they'll just kind of or they'll come to me with images of mine that they like and ah, they want right. to photograph them because, oh, I'm really drawn to this image or I really like the personality in this image or something like that. And then I take that and I look, look at them and I look at the clothes they brought and I don't know, just kind of go from there. Um, nice. But otherwise, sometimes I will kind of like create the whole thing, buy the clothes, like, I don't know. It's hard, though. I mean, inspiration is like it's hard to to, ta to talk about sometimes. But um, I don't know. I don't know where all my ideas come from. I think that it's funny that you say they all go together because I always find them to be all over the place. I do feel like my work is like all over the place. They are completely different. Every single picture is completely different. But even so, just I don't know if it's kind of I think it's the quality of it. The quality of it being put all together makes me think, wow, this is still part of one collection. Like if you were to open up, um, you know, a show room and just have those on the wall, they would all go together just because, I don't know, it's just a vibe. I love it, I'm you know? I'm waiting for you to say vibe. Oh, I'm yeah. for you to say vibe. <laughs> it has a vibe. Just say it already. Um, <laughs> that's what I think. But I think location sometimes inspires you in some way. Uh, like, I mean, the mountain shot, obviously, that was an epic angle on that to make Carmen look even bigger uh, in life. Right. That's my two cents. In the, no, definitely. And it comes to you in the moment. So it's not like not everything is be planned exactly. Like I'll have like a certain like, you know, or I'll make a mood board for myself or for the shoot or for my ideas. But yeah, in the moment, you just, yeah, you kind of feel it all. It all comes together, the hair, the makeup, the clothes, the location. Right. And yeah, I was like, I need to get wide. I need to go wide. You know, I need to get low. I need to do that kind of, yeah, the sky, the, like, the whole thing. That right. just made sense for that shoot. Um, so, yeah, it does. It is, it comes from all, all kind of places, and it just kind of merges together, and then here you go. <laughs> like, with that said, you were saying that you had openings for the 19th for mini sessions. Now, when you say mini sessions, how long would that be? So it's like 20 minutes usually. Um, mm, got you. I feel like, honestly, I can do a lot <laughs> in 20 minutes. Like the, the bigger shoots I do, they take a long time because of the, the outfits, the styling, the hair, the makeup. When I go mm -hmm. to shoot, I really don't take that long um so so yeah on the 19th I'm doing mini sessions and I you know I, I'll talk to everyone beforehand about what they want and we'll talk discuss um you know outfits and everything like that beforehand so then they just come ready to go and we right. like 20 minutes and it still feels like we got a lot of time in and a lot of options um yeah so I still have like some spots available if anyone wants to um, nice. I'm going to sign Angela up. Please. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was going to say he's going to sign himself up. He's like, I'll sign Angela up. Let me get her. Uh, well, yeah. I, can, I can record your behind the scenes <laughs> while yeah. you do that. That's too funny. So are you from Atlanta, Georgia? Were you born here? Or like, are you from somewhere else? Somewhere else, planet Earth. <laughs> are you from somewhere else on planet Earth? 
somewhere else. Um, I did grow up in Georgia. I, oh. I was born in Connecticut, um, but we moved to South Georgia when I was three. So um, I lived, I grew up in Thomasville, which is like on the Florida border, about four hours um, from here. So nice. Okay. That's so, yet to be to Florida. I've been living here over 10 years, 11 years now. Never been to Florida? Mm. Never. And people? That's so close. They're so shocked when they hear that. They're like, what? But I mean, New Yorkers, I mean, do we really go to... I went to Canada a lot. Yo, <laughs> <laughs> what else? We went north. I've never been to Canada? Yeah. <laughs> I've never been to Canada. Canada. Seriously? Somebody's giving you a lot of love. I just want to shout out that person. Yay. A lot of hearts over here. I know they're not for me, so. <laughs> <laughs> so, what was your first camera or what was your, and what is your most favorite camera that you don't have to use, but it's, it's something that's just very precious to you or who got you your first camera? Because camera equipment is very expensive. It is expensive. For sure. Um, you know, I was just talking to someone the other day about film camera equipment is not, the equipment's not as expensive, but then you pay for the film and developing and over time it is more expensive, but either yeah. way, not a cheap uh, thing to get into. But my first camera, I'm trying to, I think my first camera I bought was a Polaroid. I'm pretty sure. Nice. Uh, which I still have. And it worked up until like two years ago um, and then suddenly stopped working, but I'm still a big Polaroid shooter. And so, you know, a lot of my Instagram has some instant, instant film on it, but I think that was the first camera I bought. I remember my, uh, our family friend, um, he was like an uncle to us. He sent us all Christmas money. And I went to Walmart and was like, nice. and my mom was like, are you sure this is going to take all of it, all the money? And I was like, yes, I want it. <laughs> Aww. Awesome. So that uh, yeah. You said Polaroid, like the the original one that kind of flips up. Yeah. Do you like the new one that's out? So the I type, like the the new, is that what you mean? The I. It's like a, it's a new version that it's basically the same body, but it does like focusing and it's a little bit different. Yeah. I, I want to buy one. I was just thought. Yeah. That would be kind of cool. They are. They're cool. They're hard. They're like a little bit hard to get used to when you're used to shooting the old ones. But if you yeah. don't have an old one, like they are, they're great cameras and they use the same chemistry and film, which right. is the magic behind the Polaroid is, you know, even though it's the chemistry is different than it used to be because of uh, all that. But, um, but the, the images are the same and they're beautiful. Um, but yeah, it is a, it's slightly different and a little hard to get used to for me. Um, being that I shoot the old, the old ones, but right, right. So, can I ask you why? Back in the day, we had Polaroids, we had disposable cameras, and you just had one shot at it. If it was a group picture, it was you had one chance. You froze your face, and me, I always did the peace sign. It's an Asian thing. We always do V for victory, you know. <laughs> and everybody took that one picture. But now it takes 30 minutes with a digital camera that you can see yourself to take one good picture. Why? <laughs> why, why do we torture ourselves? <laughs> it's part of the reason why I shoot film. It's like, a, I think it's like an obsession with like perfection almost, you know, because you can see it, you, you know. And the Polaroid, yeah, they come sooner than a 35 millimeter film or whatever, but it still like takes a minute and you've moved on, you know, it's not like, you know like that like the moment is is changed it's gone um but that's part of the reason why i shoot film now because it's like i would be like checking the screen constantly when i did start shooting digital and i did some weddings um <laughs> these hearts are hilarious don't you love them i love them it's kind of <laughs> like it makes my it's smile get bigger it's a vibe <laughs> it's a vibe a, a good one too <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so that's, I mean, that's what I think. We were just like looking, we're like, oh, that could be slightly different. That could be better. That could be better. And it's like, yeah, it doesn't really matter, but I'm guilty of it. And so I was like, take away the screen, go back to film, you know, be in the moment and trust, trust myself, trust my relationship with my client and, um, and just do, do, shoot. <laughs> I swear. Yeah, yeah. Cause like, if you were to ever see a group of girls 
right? Including myself and my girlfriends. And we're like, we take a picture. There's always one person. Oh, no, 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 no. We got to take it again. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and this, I, little, this little bird in the background's wings was crooked. Like, we need to, I'm like, oh, my God. I, I don't want to be in this picture anymore. I want to do it. <laughs> Stacy, you're always like this. <laughs> Why well, you gotta call out Stacy? I say, I don't, Leave I don't Stacey have, alone. I don't have a friend named Stacy. <laughs> so I saw that this was super interesting to me. You had in your stories that you were gonna take, um, you're taking submissions for pictures so that you can peer review them, and you're gonna start releasing that. I thought that was super, super great to have. Um, how do I say this? To offer that type of critique that other people wouldn't be able to see because when you're in it and you're doing it yourself, you might not see what someone else sees or a professional as yourself who's experienced might see can be done better. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah. Um, so I decided to do that because um, in art school, I went to art school and we would always have, you know, critique similar to what I got on these cassette tapes uh, from the correspondence course, but <laughs> Or like, like you say, like a peer review, you know, in class, we would just, we would pin our photos up and then just, we couldn't say anything and everyone else talk about it, you know, and discuss it and getting that other like set of eyes on your image, like you said, is, yeah, it's really invaluable and because it's so hard when you're so close to the work, you know, like you, you do your best, but at the end of the day, you know, you're going to miss things. Um, so I just, I loved that part of school. I thought it was, the, I mean, it was the best part of art school, the most beneficial. And, um, and I mean, on, on, when it wasn't my work, honestly, I would, I would talk a lot. <laughs> and I'm like generally a pretty quiet, introverted person, but I just really enjoyed kind of, I guess I'm kind of analytical and kind of breaking apart, like what's working and what's not working. And so right. I thought, because I started doing these like TikToks and these reels and like I was trying to just come up with ideas for content and I was like you know what that, that might be a cool thing to do is just like yeah offer people to submit their photos and um I'll just I'll talk about it I'll just I mean it's my opinion but like yeah I've been doing this for a long time and um and I think it could be beneficial and hopefully just or just interesting to the people um yeah who want another set of eyes on their work so I think it's super dope. I could tell you really love doing this. <laughs> so that's fantastic. Can I ask you a question? So can I ask you about your thoughts on nudity? Because I do see, I mean, obviously it's not all out there, you know, spread eagle nudity that you have up, but it's so tasteful, all of the spread pictures that you, eagle. yeah, it's not like, you know, it's, <laughs> you know, but it's super, super, I love, I love the tasteful, you know, just pictures that you take what are your thoughts on that or how do you get also and how do you get a model to be comfortable to hey trust me it's gonna look really great if we do this how do you get it mm -hmm. yeah so uh, I think that is kind of you know a touchy subject and coming from art school I mean it for lack of a better word sometimes nudity can be kind of like a crutch or like a very um an easy, an easy way to go when you, especially when you're talking fine art, right? You, you right. say photography, people, it's like nudes, right? Like that's what everyone thinks of because that's kind of the genre that they most likely fall under. And I'm, I, I come from a very conservative background and I'm very like conscious of this kind of thing. Um, and I never wanted my work to be, I just never wanted to take the easy way out. I guess. And I didn't want to just be like, Oh, I'll just, you know, shoot him nude and just like get a bunch of likes or whatever it might be. Right. So I, I thought a lot about it before I went into that realm. But I mean, obviously like I am an artist and I am like, uh, I mean, the human form is a beautiful thing. And so I have tried to introduce it in a kind of classy way, I guess. Um, and so when I, when I approach it, I mean, yeah, I'm just very upfront. People, normally it's people either I know I've worked with before or people who know my work already or who know me and just kind of recognize like where I'm coming from and the intention behind the work is not, you know, over sexualizing. It's just, um, yeah, showing the beauty, the beauty of the human form. And so, yeah, it, it 
they, I mean, people just, people trust me if I'm going to do that and because they, they know me or they know my work. And I do think it's important though, to establish that relationship beforehand with someone and to obviously be very, very like above board when it comes to like working in that setting, you know, I'm just, very yeah. just I'm, I don't like approach them, you know, like that much, you know, we're just, I'm just very professional about, mm -hmm. you know, you can't, and you have to think about that kind of stuff because it, there's just, there's too much out there that um, goes south when you, when you go into that realm. So, um, mm -hmm. right. yeah, I could totally tell, like when I saw it, I mean, even if it is, let's say sexualized, it's just so classy, you know, mm -hmm. just like even your picture with the X's on the chest and everything is just, I was like, I'm just like mesmerized guy. And I think I've been that way ever since I was young. When I see like a female's body, it's just so beautiful. There's so many curves, you know. So then one time I went to um, this uh, person's house and all over the, not all over, but they had some expensive artwork that was um, Victorian and nude. And I was just like, staring at it just like wow that's so pretty <laughs> like just staring you know and it's just I think it's just awesome that you're able to it, the vibe of your Instagram is just freeing I'm like oh what's this <gasps> oh what's this and it's just I I love it I really really love it so where can people submit their submissions to get your critiques for the pictures yeah Let's go back to that now as my link in bio on my Instagram page at Jordana Dale, I've, I've posted it there. I'm going to keep it up for a little while. Um, my website, I'm kind of reworking, but hopefully I will add it to a page of my website as well as just an ongoing thing. I'm just getting started with this idea. So I don't know, probably do one or two, you know, a month or something like that. Um, but yeah, right now it's the link in my bio. It's like a form. It'll just go to a form where you can upload um, the uh, your image and then ask me any questions if you have it and then uh, submit it there. So yeah. Nice. That's fantastic. I'm going to do it. Any photographers I'm that- I'm going to submit. Submit. <laughs> Please do. Uh, hopefully it's a good one. It's going to be all hip hop. It's going to be all hip hop pictures. What, like, what do you think about on, this gang shot? And you're like, well, you, maybe on. you I want like hip -hop music Tito good, to lean in with the AK-47. <laughs> I don't think that's right at all, actually. But okay, all my pictures are of you. Uh, Angel's my only model and my dog. Am I your, oh, I thought you were saying Angel. <laughs> my dog's my best model. <laughs> Easiest one to work with. Angela's my only no model and my dog. Oh, boy. Oh, <laughs> but boy. But Lucy's a star. So. <laughs> that's too funny no. so here's the thing though do you have any photographers that you look up to I remember growing up honestly I want to say a lot of photographers work behind the scenes so they don't really get but Annie Leibovitz I know her work she's fantastic so anybody that you look up to or admire their work yeah definitely um, there's this photographer he was in the fine art world when I was in school, uh, Ryan McGinley is his name. He doesn't even have a huge social presence, um, but he's really big in the fine art world and his work is fantastic. Uh, as far as like other contemporary photographers that are on Instagram, Emily Soto has been a really big inspiration of mine. She's from New York and she shoots a lot of like fashion on film um, and a lot nice. of droids as well and things like, like her work. I feel like if I could mix Brian McGinley and Emily Soto, that's who I want to be. Like, that's just like what I aim to be. Um, so there, there are some of my favorites. Um, I mean, some of the, the older school, like photographers as well, back in the day, Jorgen Teller, um, he is fantastic. Did a lot of like fashion work in the eighties and nineties, still working today in fashion. And nice. I work so much. Um, yeah, and another co contemporary commercial photographer named Jimmy Marble, who's like, I'm pretty sure he's on the West Coast right now, and his work is, is really stunning. Um, so yeah, I mean, I definitely have like a lot of like inspiration I take in <laughs> often, um, and yeah, I just I want to do it all. I want to be like everyone else. <laughs> so, what is your ideal photography job? Freelancing, or well, obviously it's all freelancing. But working for a magazine, working for a brand, working for weddings. Yeah, weddings. <laughs> I mean, like that's the type of job. Right. It is. 
Um, yeah. <laughs> How many times do I have to tell you she's an artist? She is an artist, okay? There's art in the wedding. <laughs> there is. Dresses okay. and But stuff this like that. is Jordana Dale, okay? okay? We are not going to. <laughs> it was a no. question. I was adding to it. <laughs> yes, I did shoot my friend's wedding. I just showed her some of the pictures and she loved them. So there is, like, I, I can do it all. But ideally, I, um, yeah, so freelance, like, Ideally, I would get an agent, a commercial agent, to represent me to big brands um, and shoot, like, campaigns for, um, so for, like, designer brands. Uh, so that would be ideal in the, like, commercial fashion realm. And then I also would love to, to still continue my fine art work. I've been thinking a lot more about conceptual uh, ideas and wanting to... Um, yeah, display my work in galleries. I've, I've been in some shows in the past. Um, but yeah, having a gallery representation as well. And you know, selling prints in that in that realm would also be uh, ideal. So nice. Yeah. You were saying that you had prints for sale right now, and they can go where can they get these prints? I do have some yeah, so um, they are on my Instagram story highlights. So it, it says print sale and it'll see what I have like already printed. Um, but I'm always happy to make prints of any of the images you see on my Instagram or my website. Um, I'm happy to, to print in any size for anyone, but I do have specific ones already printed and ready to go. If anyone's interested in that, it's on my story highlights. Nice. Fantastic. So Mike was saying that a lot of photographers have what was a I saying? photographic memory. Hmm. That's that's true. Well, at least you kind of you pull from that or attention to detail is what I said. I had okay. So my stepdad personal story. Stepdad went to Buffalo University and he had a roommate who had a photographic memory. So all these kids are killing themselves trying to study for the test before the test, like stressed out. And this guy who had a photographic memory just the day before the test got the textbook and was just like nice. Flipping the page one time, and that's all he needed to do. Hold on, is that how you turn the page? Like yeah. this? Yeah, you just get what the is, corner. What, you, what is that? Nobody turns the page what? like that. This, I Almost hate like this. Almost like you had chopsticks. This, I, the, uh, uh, oh. <laughs> More like a swipe. The original swipe. Well, I mean, don't you, from the corner, <laughs> you pick it from the corner and flip it over. We're not buying it. Okay, Continue. sorry. But yeah, so photographic memory. Do you feel like you're more of a visual person? than someone who retains information by just listening? I'm definitely, definitely more visual, but I, I wouldn't say photographic memory. Um, I think people with true photographic memories, yeah, they like, like you said, they can just look at like a page and absorb it. And I'm definitely not like that. And my memory is not so great these days, but I do like, I do see things in pictures and I think in, in like pictures, right. It's like constantly just like, um, photos gotcha. in or, and certain memories will stand out as like still images. So like, I'll have these like memories of certain people or moments and I will see it as if I was like a third party looking at myself and this other person, mm. but like, I'll see it in my head that way. When nice. I this moment so I do have that kind of like I don't know bird's eye view or whatever like this other view of my life in memories but I don't remember everything that way or I don't I, I can't just conjure up memories very easily it's just when I get them that's what they look like so. I would nice. never never want a photographic memory can you imagine because that's a gift you're born with mm -hmm. you walk you walk in on your parents one time forget oh, it nobody will be able to fix you not a single yeah, yeah. therapist. Like, what is not a sim. You would even if you were hypnotized, you would still have that reserved in the file cabinet in the back and just never. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, I just wanted to finish your joke. <laughs> Thank you for that your joke sound is effect. Nice. Uh, so I did say you may have attention to detail, which you probably do, especially if you're just trying to shoot on film. You need everything set the way it needs to be set. It might be an occupational hazard, too, how you see everything in pictures. It's just a habit now at this point. Yeah. So we have a trivia question. Oh, no. For you. Oh, you could win a prize. You can win Hold a prize. on. Show her the wheel. Let, show me. Oh, Let's show her the wheel. Hold on. 
Uh, so the wheel is a good thing. It's <laughs> things you can win. Oh, it's, my it's, it's pretty serious. It's probably backwards for you right now. Yes, but, but I will tell you each of the items. There we go. Right. This right. one is a gift card for $10 at Starbucks. Nice. nice. Which, yeah. <laughs> Everybody likes that one. Next one is a high five from yours truly. Nice. I, I would say that uh, touch it has been very underrated <laughs> since the quarantine. Well, so we're going to have to bring it. It's a sanitized high five. Hi sanitized. Free sanitized. Spray and, and gel. And post sanitized. <laughs> then we have a cartoon by Mike. He'll draw a cartoon of you. Uh, Did you cartoons. Do I'm sorry, say that again? Did you draw the logo on y'all's page or the like the little cartoon of you, Angela? That was actually Mr. At No I D A. Yeah. So the letter I D U H. Okay. <laughs> and I will totally link you up with him. He's super fantastic. He actually works with a Korean skincare brand. Oh, cool. And he does all the animation and everything for them. Plug for No ID. I know. Uh, we should have him on the show one day. He He's super. Be super nice guy so we reached out to super him nice. and, he, and he was like yeah hell yeah i'll do it yeah yeah uh the next one is a hug by yours truly <laughs> nice this is a hundred dollars <laughs> angela the comic bucks angela so when we go bucks. public or <laughs> when we get merch you'll get a hundred dollars like, worth yeah what I, I feel like people don't get as excited as they, they, well, they could be a, about that one. Instant, it's not an instant win. You have no merch. <laughs> you know you know what's so funny about this? Actually, I was going to have this covered so that it just says $100. And then if you ever landed on it, we would take the post-it off and it was the Angel the Comic Bucks. But I thought it was a little too cruel. Uh, a little dirty. <laughs> a little dirty. <laughs> Next one is a gift card. $10 Amazon. Nice. nice. This one is the box. Question. Ooh. No one has won the box. No. This may be our first box winner. <laughs> we don't know. And then we're back to a handshake by yours truly, sanitized. Oh, so that's where we started. No, no, no. High five was where we started. Oh, wow. A lot of hands. Firm <laughs> handshake. It would be a firm handshake. Also sanitized. Yes, yeah, sanitized with spray and vaccinated after we're all right, 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 right. We got it. Ticket for a Netflix movie. You, gotta, you get our password for 24 hours. No, no, they don't. That's Why do you keep you saying want. that? That's the only way it's going to work. $50, Angela, the comic bucks. You know the deal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When we go public. And then, yeah, and we started a gift card, $10. Anything intriguing or yeah. that you... Uh, like, especially the box. I'm curious. Oh, no. Mm, oh, the oh, box. Oh, no. The box. No one's won the box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so here's the question. Okay. Yeah. Are you ready? Are you ready for the question? Okay. You have to close your eyes. It's weird. Yeah, it's weird. Just it's, it's a good okay. question. She's like, oh my God. Don't you or just cover your eyes. You don't yeah, have to yeah. close your eyes. No <laughs> cheating. Okay. Jord Jordana, what color is Mike's shirt? <laughs> you that's the end of that's how long the clip is, so you kinda it, have to answer. Thank you for being on the show. Uh, <laughs> dark gray. Uh, yeah, yeah, I heard yeah, I heard yeah, yeah. wait, I heard dark blue. Dark blue. Dark you blue, won. you won! Yeah. Yeah, dark blue. You are correct. Wait, what? What did she say? What? It looks gray on my screen. It, it does look gray. It's it's gray it does blue. Look gray. It's gray blue. I love kimchi. All I right. Love kimchi. So you win. Let's do a spin. Let's okay, do a spin. All right. You ready? You ready? One, two, three. What did she win? <laughs> what is the it? Box! The box. The box. The box. Do you Where have... is the box? Where is the box? I don't Where? have the box. <laughs> Where is the box? The box is. The bo Okay. Look, we never had anyone we in the box. We never had a that's, box. That's we never thing. had a box. Give me that's give me a box. Just any box? Bam. Any box. It's an empty box. But it no. has a no, Spider-Man. No no no. no, no, no. No. It is it actually is a gift. I would be making a Lego figurine of you. Nice. <laughs> So then oh, that's the mystery God. box. Oh. And that's a power up. That's what we call that. It has like it'll be holding a camera. Yes. 
and it'll be you. So that's what you're gonna get. Yay! Yes. That's the mystery Yay. box. Oh no! Now we have to come up with someone. Now we can't have anybody get the box ever again. We're gonna. Uh, why? <laughs> you don't have the box with you right now. Jordana, can you All tell? Right. What? I'm sorry. What? I'll be the only one with the box. <laughs> that's it. The box has been discovered. <laughs> So, Jordana, can you tell everyone where they can find you at? At, uh, at Jordana Dale on Instagram. That's J-O-R-D-A-N-A-D-A-L-E. Which at I will link in the description, people. So go check her out. Her, yeah, yeah. Again, her profile. Oh, amazing. I love it. Thank you. Check it out. My website is also JordanaDale.com. Which I will put in the description, people. So go check her out. And thank you so much for being on the show. It's such a pleasure having you. Having me. It was great. Great talking uh, to you. So we'll see you next time. Thank you. And that Lego figurine, it's going yeah. to you. So, you. so you basically mail that, right? You yeah. Mail it yeah. You probably have a P.O. box or something. I we can meet for coffee after we get fully vaccinated. I have a, a regular mailbox. So I don't oh, know. okay. Yes. <laughs> Yes, confidential. That or Angela just throw it on your front you. lawn. It's on the lawn. If <laughs> if a pigeon happens to be on your window and has a little piece of string with the legal figure, and that's oh, you, boo boo. That's weird. <laughs> if, it, if it doesn't have a camera, it's not from Angela. It's not for me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you. Thank we you. will see you. Thank you very time. much. All right, all right. I love Ah, that was fantastic. I told you. Why were you so excuse me? Why were you so jealous in the beginning? I told you she'd be awesome. I never said I was jealous. I said, uh, if you're gonna interview a photographer, I should also be interviewed. So when I <laughs> So let me know. I'll let you know if I'm available. Sure. Thursday nights. I, Have I'm your people busy. call my people. I'm kind of busy on Thursday nights. So okay. If you can move your show to Friday. <laughs> I'll be there. So when I first had a pre-interview with Jordana, she was like, oh, so it's you and your husband? And I said, no, it's my show. Me. Oh. No. I'm just <laughs> oh. I was like, me. yep, it's me and Mike. I don't even have to be here then. Oh, uh, no, no. I get my Thursday nights back. <laughs> Follow me on my channel <laughs> where I'll be doing a live podcast of Angela doing a podcast by herself. Oh, boy. Should be a hit. That is uh, critiquing, though. That's awesome. I should do that to you going forward. Like when you're doing something in the kitchen or you're cooking, I'm going to yeah, you get a recorder. And... You already do that. No, but this time it'll be recorded. Mm. And I'll put it on a cassette. You have to get a cassette player. Right. And... You will put the cassette in. Yeah. Listen to me. Hey, um, Mike, when you're loading the dishwasher, you want to make sure that the cups go on the top shelf. Not everything should be thrown okay. in right, there. We and... got it. We got it. I probably wouldn't listen to it. Oh, you I chuck it? I would listen to it fall in the trash can. I've been, I, I've been told money. I've been told I should do ASMR. What do you think? Uh, give me your best example right now. Okay. The prize wheel, right? So it's AMSR. Uh, I'm making the sounds. Yeah. I'm making the that. sounds. That's probably not going to work. Instead of doing the sounds, I would be making the sounds yeah, with my mouth. Not. Uh, thanks for shopping, stopping by. Uh, oh, I thought wait. you were thanking me for shopping. I was we, like, you're uh, welcome. I do it all the so we time. We have a first winner for the box. I know. And it's been a Lego figurine. Is that what it is? Yeah. And it's going to have a camera. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be Jordana. So as it's a Lego not in figurine. the box because it's of the person, whoever the person is. All right. All or right. you never had a box. No, I had a box. <laughs> go, go. I'm kidding. Just... Anyways, I also want a figurine of myself. Thank you. Don't make him husky. <laughs> there isn't. They're all one size. <laughs> oh, you're, you think I'm so cruel. Anyways, thanks for stopping by, everybody. Are we done? What time is it? Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, so we, we got, got five, five minutes. minutes. We got yeah. five minutes. Okay. What else is going on? Hey, so, uh, yeah. What's going on with you, man? Yeah, we usually don't finish this early. What happened? You want me to share this story, but I don't want to share it. Oh. Yeah. I had. So, what happened was there was someone that uh, it was a group setting. I'm going to be very vague about it because I don't, I don't, I don't think it's. Obviously, they were upset. Oh. It was a group setting. Okay. The group kind of cracked a joke about her hmm. um, at her expense, but not, not nothing vicious. 
Right. It just, she's the type of person that is not. Um, the joking type. Yeah, she's not the joking type. No, I don't, I don't want to be a part of your joke. That type. Yeah. Mm. Like, no, I laugh at you. Oh, nah. she's the joking type. She's the joker. No. She's the joker. So then afterwards, me being the good saint, trying to be the good saint, went over to her and was like, hey, I'm so <laughs> sorry that that happened. See, you're already laughing. I hate this. I said, hey, I'm so sorry that happened. And, you know, we, we were laughing with you, not at you. And she just snapped back and said, do not police my feelings. Oh, and my I gosh. Was, there it is. I was frozen. <laughs> I was like, why oh, did just... I even go to her? I feel right. so that was a huge mistake. I don't even know why you went up to her in the first place. It's not, what I not love her mom. What I love is that I told you this story. Well, we don't have to get into that. And now whenever <laughs> anything happens, when I whenever you're feeling bad about her something like that or anything, right. what do you do not police my feelings. I always tell Why do you Angela always do that? Do not police my feelings anymore. You know that's and a sour spot because I felt it's, really bad. It's semi sour for her, and that's what makes it funnier. Because I felt really bad that she. Because <laughs> I looked at her after they cracked the joke, and she looked pissed. So yeah. that's why she wasn't laughing at all. But for anyone watching, if you add that to your list of stuff. Don't no. police my feelings. Do it's not pretty police my feelings. It's pretty intense. It almost stops the person completely. I know it stopped you. You didn't say anything after that. Like, right? don't tell me how to feel. Don't tell okay. me how to feel. Yeah. Such a, Do not a, police it, my it's feelings. Very I'm like, intense. I might put that on a shirt. No, no, first of all, like, don't police my feelings. Yes. Is police, somebody talking? Yeah. Who's talking? What's up? Is he anybody? Oh, I don't so, like, glasses. don't tell me how to feel. No. If I'm upset, let me be upset. Don't come to me. And t like now her ha 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 got even longer. What I'm saying is, don't police my feelings. Definitely should be a part of every everyone's uh, phrase. I felt really bad. <laughs> it's oh funny. no! See now we got other people saying it. It's freaking hilarious. As soon as you told it to me, told me that story, it stuck with me. It almost I was offended almost. Or I was startled. trying to <laughs> I, was, I was trying to make her not feel so now, bad that that happened. Every time you say something, I'm like, "Don't police my feelings." It's okay. just natural. All and right. I think it's hilarious, and at the same time, because obviously I don't mean it the way she meant it. If I tell you, uh, but the oh no, but you know that you're the fact that it's sour. <laughs> is probably the bad part of it. You know what you're doing. Uh, but I think it's it's pretty hilarious. So, yeah, you're welcome. So anybody, oh, wait, someone there, shortened it. DMPMF. DM, say again? DM, PM, I do not police my feelings. Mm, I think it's nicer when it's just don't police my feelings. The reason why I froze, P I want to say, no, DM, PM, F. They are right. They are correct how they wrote it. The reason why I froze when she said that is not just because it was so loud. <laughs> oh, she said it loud, too. She yelled it at me. Oh, damn. Yeah, no, this so is why I'm saying it's sour. So that I'm, makes it more aggressive. Well, I, I wasn't even was the just... one that made the joke. So it wasn't that she yelled it at me. Mm. It was the fact that English is, a, is my second language. And I swear, I was thinking, can that be a verb? Is that... Verb. Is would that... It, would it can be? police be a verb? <laughs> I was thinking, uh, grammatically, is this correct? Technically, policing is a verb. And then I felt bad. Yeah, and that's what she wanted. Because so we weren't alone. See, it gets don't let worse. Her win. Don't let her win. But it gets don't worse. police my feelings is one of the greatest things I ever heard. Uh, and that's why it's going to be on a shirt. Angela's first merch line. No. It will be a don't police my feelings Maybe shirt. in like 100 years when it's calmed down. Oh, okay. Well, anyways. <laughs> Uh, I thought that was great, so I'm glad you shared Thank that you. story. Thank Thanks, you. Now everybody. you know. Now you know that it was a, a sour moment for me, and yet you still. Yeah, I probably won't stop it. Yeah, you but, still text it to me, so that's great. Um, I think it's more effective in a text because oh, you get to okay. read it. I'm shutting this down. You have to turn on your phone to see it. Everyone, thank you so much for joining us tonight, and we'll see you next Thursday. We've got oh. Next Thursday's guest is going to be fantastic. Who's next Thursday? J. Co. Comic. Joy Coy. Oh. J. Co. J. Co. 
Okay. Next week's guest is going to be Comic J. Cole, and I can't wait. Nice. Woo! Thank J. you for Cole, joining he's us. A comic. Yeah, he's Your a comic. First comic on the show. Represent him. Nice. All right. Well, we'll see you next week for our first comic interview. Thank you, everyone. Have a great night. I love Kiki. I love, love Kiki. I love Kiki.